Hello guys, so this is the third part of uh, lecture uh, seven, okay? And again, we continue with examples on diode circuits using the X and solving them using the exponential model, okay? So here is another example. We have a diode in parallel with resistor. The resistor is one kilo ohms, and the diode has a saturation current of uh, three uh, times 10 to the power minus 16, and, uh, 16 amperes, okay? And the required here is to find VD for IX equal to one milliamperes. When IX is a source here, is one milliamperes. Uh, I chose or selected this uh, example for you uh, to show you that we can also use current sources. Okay, so this is basically to train you on uh, circuits with current sources. Okay, they are legitimate sources. We can use them just like the batteries or the voltage sources as well. Okay, so uh, here the current source current IX will be divided into IR and ID. And here is the voltage VD from N to B. Okay, it is the same as the uh, uh, resistor voltage because they are in parallel and also the IX current source voltage as well. Okay. In such kind of uh, circuits, how we could know if the diode is, uh, is forward or reverse, simply see the direction of, or check the direction of the positive current in the diode. So IX is our current source. It gives us a positive current. This positive current is going in that way. And it will be branched here. A part of it will go to the resistor. Another part going in that way from B to N will go to the diode. Since this, this portion ID is going from B to N, then the, uh, the diode is connected in forward bias. Okay? The current may be high, small, uh, you know, but it's forward bias. Forward bias mean the voltage must be positive, the current must be positive, with such directions or polarities. The current must be positive flowing from B to N, the voltage must be positive uh, and from N to B, or N is a negative polarity, uh, B is the positive polarity of the diode, or the voltage at the N side, the cathode is lower than the voltage then uh, of the anode, the B, B side. Okay, so let's see how we solve this, how we could, can solve this. Okay, so basically let's write down our equations. This guy is in forward, so diode here is in forward. That's a good news and bad news. The good news here is that I like most of the stuff, so the voltage and the current will be positive, okay? <laughs> but this is not really important, of course. But the bad news here is that since it's forward, you know, we don't have these, uh, you know, these informations that we got from the reverse, uh, uh, reverse uh, bias uh, diodes circuits that we solved so, uh, previously, mm -hmm. in which if we work in the second region, for example, region two, as, uh, we know the current, and then the voltage will be negative for some values that we can determine from the circuit based on the information that we get, based on that assumption that the diode is in, in region two. If it was in region three, I mean breakdown, when we know, you know the breakdown, we know the voltage of the diode will be equal to the breakdown voltage. Then we can determine the current based on the circuit. Okay. Only region one in reverse and the, forward, the whole forward region uh, we cannot do that because the voltage can be anything. The I mean, uh, the current can be anything. Maybe we can know the polarity in region one in reverse. The voltage will be negative. The current will be negative. The voltage is is comparable to VT, but how much exactly we don't know. The current is less than I note or I saturation. So it's a reverse saturation current, but how much exactly we don't know as well. Okay. So it's loose. Okay, it's in forward. Okay, so we know that uh, ID equal to IS exponential VD over VT minus one. Or we can write it in another way, VD equal to VT len ID over IS plus one. Of course, both are, you know, from each other. You know, we get the first one, then we, you know, 
rearrange it to get the second one. They are basically the same equation. Okay. And from this circuit here, so this is basically the characteristic of the light. This is does this has no relation to the circuit. But from the circuit, we can deduce another equations. Like for example, uh, Ix equal to Ir plus Id. Okay. And we know that VR, it's called this one. We know that VR equal to VD, the voltage across the resistor. VR equal to the voltage of the diode because they are in parallel. So IX equal to IR, and this is equal to IR times R. So IR is, uh, so basically IR, can be written as VD or VR over, I, over R. So IR is equal to VD over R plus ID. And from this, ID equal to IX minus VD over R. We will call this one and you know, just let's uh, uh, remove this because we're gonna, we're gonna use this in our, in our solution rather than the first form of it. Of course, they are both. I mean, this, uh, this equation here or this equation, they are just you know, equal to each other. We just rearrange and substitute and stuff. What are other equations that we can use? So this is equation in two unknowns. So ID is unknown. VD is unknown, two unknowns. Second equation luckily is this equation here. VD equal to VT, then ID over IS plus one. Another, so I'm sorry, same unknowns. So we now we have two equations in two unknowns. So we have two equations in two unknowns. But fortunately, unfortunately, one of them is nonlinear equation. So we cannot, you know, go forward and you know with easy steps to find ID or VD. Then substitute and they get the another one, the other variable or unknown. So we have two ways now, either to solve them uh, numerically, like what we did, uh, the, like what we did before, yeah, in our first example, with, or uh, graphically. I will do it, you know, numerically with you because in exam I cannot ask you for to do something graphically because we need, uh, you know, to do programming and stuff. But as we will see now, the iterative method will be easy. Maybe in four or five steps, you can reach, or even less, you can reach the solution. Okay? So, we have two equations. The steps will be as follows. Okay? First, so uh, one equation is, on, is, is uh, nonlinear. Let's write this first for your reference. So we need iterative solution. Okay. So we're gonna assume this is the solution now. We're gonna, we assume uh, some initial value for VD. Then we solve in one, then solve two. Then get ID from one, then uh, get the new VD from two. 
then using the new value of VD that we, that we get from two, we recalculate ID from one. Then, so repeat, so just repeat, then repeat the first step, if we call this one and two, until, you know, some small change in uh, VD or ID is accomplished. We will see that, we will see that. Okay? In our case, uh, zero may be zero. Approximately zero. Okay? So let's now do that together. Okay, on uh, uh, using a calculator. So again, just a summary for what, of what we will do. We will have, we will start by VD. Then we get from equation one, we get ID. Then we substitute by ID in equation two and we get the new value of VD. Then we take this value and recalculate I1 from equation one, then recalculate uh, VD from equation two and so on and so forth. So, so let's do that. Uh, here is, you know, the screen is divided into two parts. Here is our uh, lecture notes. And here is the two equations in which we're gonna, uh, you know, uh, uh, solve iteratively. So we have here equation one, we have here equation two. This is equation one, this is equation two. So remember IX is one milliampers and VR here is, is one kilo. When you have a current in milliampers and the resistors are in kilo, you are, you are consistent. I mean, you can leave ID as it is in milliampers and the resistors in kilos uh, without converting them ba back to ohms or amperes, okay? Then we have here the second equation, VD equal to VT is 26 millivolt. Uh, uh, then uh, ln ID is, uh, you know, one of the, variables in which or unknowns, then IS, and the plus one, which is constant, okay? What we're gonna do, we're gonna first uh, assume some initial value for VD, like for, for example, 0.7, okay? So we take this value and substitute here in equation one to get the uh, a value for the current, 0.3. So we get ID from here, point three. So let's write it here, okay. Then we take this point three and substitute in equation two to get the new value of VD. How much it is? 0.898. So the value here, 0.898. Just three decimal places is very enough for us. So now VD was not point seven. This was just initial value. And we can see clearly here, there is a difference between the new value of VD and the initial value of VD. So we will adopt this new value, 0 0.8, uh, 0.898, okay? And just redo what we have done. Just redo what we have done. So this will be 0.898. So we calculate again ID as 0.898. So the new value of ID is 0 0.102, 0 0.102. So here, 102, here is the new value of, I, of VD. Just three decimal places is enough, is enough for us. So 0, 8, 6, 9. Okay, just align them to make it, you know, better readable. Good, now look at the new values for VD. So the old value or VD, which is just here also as well, 898 and here is 86. So difference is point or point, point oh 0.02, very small difference, right? But we'll continue. We will continue, we will reach an error of zero after maybe two steps or something. So let's take this new value and adopt it. Then calculate ID again and VD. So uh, this will be six, nine. 
it is a new value of id let's write it here first one three one so this will be substitute with it in substitute with this new id in vd equation two one uh, and this is the new value of the voltage vd point eight seven six okay so we take this new value and adopt it. 0.876, let's see. This is the new value of the current. Let's write it here, one to four. One to four, this is the new value of the voltage. Eight, seven, five. And look now for the difference. The difference is 0 0.001. One out, of, one out of thousand, okay? The difference is boy, the difference between this one and this one, the old value of, of VD, which is one, which of course this one also, is just 0 0.001, okay? We can stop at that moment. Of course, in the exam or something, I will let you know the error, the acceptable error, we can say. We can continue. Let's continue and see with such a small error what we're going to have in, in current. So the current now is 1.125. Look now at the current. So 1, 2, 5. Again, the difference between the old current and the new current is just 0 0.001 based on the new value that we adopted for VD. With this new value of current, look, 0 0.87. 0 0.87. Seven, I'm sorry, point eight seven five. Point eight seven five. Now, if you compare these two values, the difference is zero. Of course, there are small differences because we didn't consider the fourth uh, decimal place or the fifth or so. Uh, so, but this is, you know, we can consider consider this as acceptable enough because we see now VD based on our acceptable precision, three decimal places doesn't it change anymore, okay? So that's basically how you solve such kind of uh, circuits numerically, okay? We learned it from this uh, particular example, how to deal with a current source, not a voltage source in the circuit, how we determine if the, if the diode is, is forward or reverse. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we, could, we couldn't solve this, uh, you know, uh, or this circuit directly using Weber and Abin. And we have to do some iterative solution. Starting from next videos, okay, and to the rest of this part of the course, we're gonna discuss some model, approximate model for the diode in which uh, we can, uh, you know, use other uh, models rather than this exponential accurate model to solve the diode problems at the same time, we will get, you know, very good solutions. They are not perfectly accurate, but they are very close uh, or very, where well, we have, have a good accuracy, we can say. So stay tuned, stay tuned guys for the next videos, okay, to study such new models for them. See you, bye-bye.